Throughout the time of the Trump administration, a number of proto-fascist groups have become increasingly emboldened to hold demonstrations, attack people, counter protest and things of that sort. Now, thankfully, there are anti-fascist organizations working to counter those groups across the country. But at the same time that the sorts of organizations, whether federal or local police departments that should be looking to aid those trying to protect American democracy and American values. Instead, in many cases, they seem incredibly sympathetic towards the right wingers. And in some cases have even worked to infiltrate the groups that are protesting them. We're joined now by a representative of a group that has experienced exactly that sort of treatment. Andy Z, co-initiator of Refuse Fascism, welcome to the Damage Report. Thanks a lot, John. Good to be on again. Yeah, we talked a little bit a little bit ago, I think on Rebel HQ. Um, but things have been developing pretty fast since then. So your organization has had uh, some interactions with the LAPD. Can you break those down for us? Yeah, look, well, what happened is in October of 2017, we were just a few weeks out from calling for a massive protest across the country for people to take to the city squares, town squares across the country to demand that the Trump Pence regime be gone. And why we were saying this is because this is a fascist regime, which has only been revealed in, in, in uh, just over the top right now. When you're talking about mass murders of Latino people once, twice, three times, then you, now you have concentration camps on the border. This is just the what they're doing to the immigrants is just the linchpin and the battering ram of an entire fascist offense. So we called on people to take to the streets. At this time, it the LAPD, as it's turned out. Um, infiltrated refused fascism in Los Angeles. They sent a, a confidential informer, their anti-terrorist division sent a confidential informer into uh, refused fascism meetings in a church, recorded conversations. And we only discovered this because a year later, uh, the uh, Democratic district attorney and the and the, uh, uh, brought charges, 57 charges against 11 people from refused fascism uh, uh, from these two protests that took over the uh, the uh, highway that runs through downtown Los Angeles with a big banner 50 feet high, uh, 50 feet across. And uh, also they tied together some protests that we were doing and programs that we were doing at uh, UCLA and, and came in with indictments for this. And in the discovery process there, we found out that the Los Angeles Police Department was doing this discovery. And in fact, the, uh, the result of that was that they actually had to dismiss conspiracy charges, which they had whipped up around this. So I think what this shows is that we can't rely on the institutions of this system to, to redress this, to, to stop this fascism, which is what, what, what's going on. And this is an extremely serious matter that people need to, uh, to look at. Imagine if we actually had succeeded in the protests last fall and thousands of people had taken to the streets, eventually becoming millions. Look, we have to look at what's been done and is going on now in Hong Kong, what was done in Puerto Rico. Yeah. This is how we stop this. Exactly, and, and those, uh, I mean, right now, as we speak in, in Hong Kong, there are massive protests going on. Uh, so, I mean, what, what happens next with regard to the infiltration that happened of your group? Is there, is there gonna be some sort of legal recourse? Well, the immediate situation now is, uh, is that the we the first of the trials of the people who took to the highway uh, where it resulted in a hung jury, which was a tremendous victory. Uh, the uh, and but immediately the district attorney, in a very vindictive fashion, uh, refiled charges, and um, those the first two defendants are going to be up for trial again very soon. There's hearings happening next week. People can go to. RefuseFascism.org to find out the particulars of that. Then there's nine more cases that are going to follow that. As for what we do about the the uh, LAPD infiltration, uh, there was an editorial in the Los Angeles Times that ex that exposed this. Uh, then we've done an op-ed, and there was a struggle about getting that in, but it was in this past weekend, and we're going to build public opinion in terms of any le legal recourse. We'll see how things go with the trials first before we uh, any further measures are taken there. But I think this is a, a warning to people all over this country about what it is we're facing and how this is going to actually be uh, transformed. That you actually have to get to that courtroom, you have to protest that courtroom, but much more important, we need to start organizing now for where we can do and uh, I'll watch my language, Puerto Rico, <laughs> this country, okay? Yeah. Uh, but you, you get the message, this is not that difficult. It's not unknown what's gonna take it, but it will not happen. And it's unconscionable to wait. In fact, it's even collaborating with fascism to wait till 2020. 
I yeah. ask your yeah. And go it's ahead. a reminder too that I think a lot of people are like, okay, I get your concerns about you know the, the people in power seem to fundamentally despise our form of government, but a lot of people just assume. Ah, the Congress will stop them, or the courts will stop them, or the military will stop them, or the cops, somebody will stop them. The institutions are strong. But this shows that in a lot of cases, the, the institutions never really existed in that respect. There were norms that could be followed or subverted. And these organizations like the cops aren't necessarily ideologically opposed to some of the philosophy that's driving our government. And so I think that the experience that you're talking about is a reminder that people cannot simply sit idly by and assume that things will continue as they always have. Absolutely, look, our, the call for uh, the protest uh, in, in 2017 is more apt today than it was then. Mm -hmm. our, the world is being torn asunder. It's not gonna be put back together with us. And it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous uh, truth, but also a tremendous understatement to say that the police are not going to actually redress this. But neither are the elections. I mean, how did the Mueller report work out for the people who said that's gonna redress this? How are the, how did the midterm elections? Nancy Pelosi has told you that she's not gonna impeach. And this yeah. isn't the first time she's done that. She did the same thing in 2006 when actually the Democrats control both houses. Why isn't this happening? Myself, as, as I think we've talked informally when we met, uh, you know, I believe that the problem rests in the system itself and, uh, and, the, and the Democratic Party represents that system. It's not going to actually redress this. Only the people can do that, but if you believe that a better world and justice can come from within the system. You need to unite with those of us, which is not refuse fascism. It's, uh, there is refuse fascism includes people who believe in the system and those of us who believe that the problem actually resides in the system that mm -hmm. we live under. We have to unite together and get out into the streets and stay. Sorry, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. I ask people of conscience to say, how many more children need to be put in cages? How many more people need to be put in concentration camps? How many mass murders are you willing to tolerate? How much more of the environment are you prepared to see destroyed so yeah. you can go on in your life waiting for 2020 as if that's gonna redress this, if there even will be an election uh, that could actually, uh, whether people will be able to get uh, the voters, the votes won't be suppressed such that people will be able to get a change. And then what's gonna happen to all these fascists that are out there? You think they're gonna give up so quickly? I don't think so. They're preparing for a civil war. What are the, what? But that's not what we're calling for. There is still time. There is still time for people to get out into streets and learn from what's happening in Puerto Rico, what's happening in in Hong Kong, and do the same thing here. And we have to start soon, this fall. And that's what Refuse Fascism is gearing up again to call for. And this police infiltration of our organization should be a wake up call, not only to ourselves, but to millions of people to say, basta ya, enough, we need to get out there and act. Uh, the website is refusefascism.org. Andy Z, as always, uh, thank you for joining us on the show. Good to see you, John, thank you. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.